Hey, it's Kermit here, and I'm going to go uh, do a quick test flight in the Grumman Duck here. Um, we've got a big event coming up this weekend, so hey, why don't I take you along? I got my Kermit cam with me. So let's stick it on and go do some flying. Come on, let's go. The uh, This airplane was actually uh, used as a utility airplane back in World War II, and they used to pick up down pilots. You could put a couple of depth charges here out on the wing. Um, it's got uh, a retractable landing gear that goes up in the side. That's kind of the Grumman gear. It's just like a Wildcat. I'll show you in the cockpit, but you have to have to crank it up. Uh, we still got to pull it through. This is a radial engine. We want to make sure we don't have a hydraulic lock. This uh, particular one actually has an interesting thing on there. It's got an inertial starter up there, and you can put a, a big uh, hand crank in there and actually get that thing going. And uh, once the guy gets it spun up pretty good, you can pull a thing in the cockpit and it'll spin the engine through. Uh, got a nice cork float on the front here. Uh, after we pull it through, then we'll pull the cans off because it tends to drip a little bit of oil. And if this thing hadn't been running in a while, it smokes a lot. Uh, we just put some brand new tires on, so they should be good. Uh, this particular airplane, uh, when I got it, they had changed the, the, the original wheels and the brakes. The guy told me were really not very good. And once, once you got them wet, it was almost like you had no brakes. So they actually adapted a much later jet wheel. In this particular airplane, the wheels, are, I think, are about got 50 pounds heavier a side or something. So consequently, they actually added uh, an extension on the hand crank in the cockpit so I can get it up. And even at that, when I take off, I actually have to, uh, I actually have to pull the nose up and push the nose forward to kind of get some zero G on there so I can get the landing gear up. Floats all look good. Of course, both wings are covered with fabric. The guys have already checked the oil and uh, just put some fuel in it. Now, I'll take a peek down here in the basement. You can actually put, uh, it's got seat belts for two down here. And actually, if you look over here, you can see there's like a little round hatch with some wing nuts. Uh, in the, uh, during the war, you could actually take the wing nuts off. That would actually come out, and there was a little mount there that you could swing and put a camera into the position and take pictures out the belly. Uh, of course, the down pilots, if they pick somebody up, they'd sit down here in the basement. And we've got the battery in the back there. Um, of course, we'll have to take the tow bar off, but I'll go ahead and just start it right here. This all looks pretty good. And we'll go do some splashes. If you guys want to take the tug off, that'd be great. This is actually not the original hook. That's a, off a of Corsair. The original hook in the, the duck was actually much longer and retracted up inside the fuselage. But they took some of the original equipment out of this and they went ahead and hung that Corsair hook back there because it was a little more weight and they needed some weight in the tail. And that's one of the reasons why they put the, the battery in the back as well. So the battery's in the back. Close all this off. Let me go check out the... Yeah. As with most Grumman airplanes, they're a death waiting to happen, trying to climb up the side. Here we go. We got the get the seat there. Okay, that's all righty. And uh, I got the stick out, so there's nothing back here. The guy in the back really doesn't have a whole lot. This guy could, he was a gunner. Sometimes they had a gun. Sometimes he would operate radio equipment or pick up the pilots or whatever. He does have a throttle. There's a stick uh, that clips into the thing there and he's got some rudder pedals, but uh, that's about it. An altimeter and an airspeed and a clock. So that's all we've got in the back here. When I first flew this airplane, this stick in the back here uh, is actually much shorter than the one in the front. And as you can see, it's quite a bit further forward than where you would normally think it would be. Consequently, when I bought the airplane, the guy said, here, let me go take you for a ride in it so you get familiar with it. And I grabbed the stick in the back and I thought, oh my God, the stick, the controls were so heavy. And I thought, what have I just bought? Anyway, I love my duck. I love my duck. Uh, of course, here's the, where you get in to open the canopy. Uh, it's very similar to the Wildcat. 
got to make sure that's closed. Get the shoulder harnesses out here so I can get them on. And uh, did you guys already pull it through? Okay, so we already pulled the engine through for make sure it didn't have a hydraulic light. So y'all want to pull the cans off? Yep. Cool. And uh, and all the plugs are in because I'll go splash them. I'll double check. Okay, cool. Hey Dave, would you go grab my sunglasses over there real quick? This is kind of a neat little deal right here. Check this out. So we got the wing up here. Okay, and some of the ships would actually put them on the side. And look at this. Got this big old cable right here. And you can pick that up and pick the whole airplane up and put it on this battleship. Of course, I don't have a battleship, but I do have the cable if I did get one. Thanks, Dave. Okay, um, I always, always, always fly with rags. I learned a long time ago, sometimes things will leak, and you got to be able to see out your windshield, or sometimes uh, something blows up in your face, and it's always nice to have a rag there wipe your eyes or your goggles or whatever okay so stuff rag down here shoulder harnesses for uh, fueling it That's a parachute on here Tail wheels unlocked. It's not turning. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so here we go. On the left side of the cockpit, this is the tail wheel that's unlocked. That'll be locked for takeoff right there. Actually locks the tail wheel straight. This is the rudder trim. I don't think I've ever used that at all. Uh, the elevator trim I use for uh, takeoff. I pretty much set it right about there, a little bit of nose up. And uh, then once I start flying, I'll crank a little bit of nose down. Um, here's the throttle, T, that's the mixture right there. This is the propeller, so you can actually, you know, move it. That's a fine pitch right there, but you can actually do a little fine adjustment right there if you need to. Hey, Wayne, yes. at some point we're going to need to uh, lubricate this propeller okay. thing here. It's pretty, it's just, you know, it just could be a little more free. Okay, so throttle. That's the mixture. Here's the. There's a couple different options. This came out as Z. No. And that. 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 Perfect. That Thanks. That well. The plugs are in the, in the rain plugs are in. Okay, good. So I won't sink. Okay. Or at least not through the. Not fast. Anyway. <laughs> not fast anyway. Okay. So anyway, um, let me plug in my headset here. I got a couple little plugs down here. 
problem is when I fly all these different airplanes, I can't remember where the damn plugs are. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, and then this is the supercharger thing. It's in low. Unless you're going to altitude, you would always leave it in low. It's always low for takeoff. But if you were to shift it at altitude, then you would shift back to there. And I'm probably thinking you'd have to get up about, I don't know, probably 15, 18,000 feet for that. That would work. So we always leave that in low. Uh, so uh, we're going to put the fuel on the main tank, which they just filled. That was in the off position. And then there's actually two tanks in this airplane. The main tank is down here. It's 125 gallons in front of me. And then there's a tank here behind the panel that's uh, 65 gallons. And if I want to, I can switch it over to the aux tank uh, and burn out of there if I want. But I'll keep it in the main tank. And there's a little valve right here, which if I pull this handle back like that, then the fuel in the aux tank drains down to the main tank. So I basically, when I go on a cross country, I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, go ahead and burn out of the, the main tank for about an hour and a half. Then I always know that I've got fuel in the top tank. So there's two different gauges, 125 gallons in the main tank, 65 gallons in the aux. I'll let that burn down for a while. And then I always know I've got fuel there and I can either burn it out of the upper tank or, or I can just drain it into the main tank. Usually drain it into the main tank, but I always like to have about 20 gallons in the aux, and if for some reason this quit, then I knew exactly how much I got there because this uh, aux gauge in this particular airplane is more accurate than this main gauge. And uh, of course, you know, you've got the same range for 65 gallons over here as you do for 125 gallons. So if this is a little bit off, it's gonna mean there's more fuel uh, you know, within the same amount of arc there. Uh, mag switch is here. Uh, here's your flight instruments, airspeed, uh, compass, altimeter, which I'll zero because I'm basically just going to be flying locally here. So I know how high I am above the ground. Uh, directional gyro, turn and slip, the thing, I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff. As uh, a clock, hadn't been wound in a while. Um, here's your engine primer. And this is going to be for energizing and meshing the starter, so that's going to be my starting deal there. Uh, a radio, <laughs> it's still a 100 channel radio. We're supposed, you gotta, you gotta have a, not a 100 channel, it's a 360 channel radio. You have to have 720 now. It tells you how, how long I've had this airplane. We need to change this radio, uh, BOR. Um, and uh, so here's your engine instruments. We got the cylinder head temp which we're going to warm the airplane up and make sure we get it up to 100 degrees before we really get above about 1,000 RPM. We want to warm it up 100 degrees uh, cylinder head temp and we're going to want uh, 40 degrees on the oil temp. Uh, there's your manifold pressure which is kind of controlled by your throttle. Uh, it's a kind of a high pressure day today. 30 inches is what it is right now. Uh, takeoff, it's a boosted engine. We're going to use 42 inches for takeoff. Uh, here's your tachometer, RPM 2600 on takeoff. And I'll cruise this about oh, 28, 29 inches of manifold pressure and about 1850 or 1900 RPM. This is your engine uh, gauges for your oil pressure, fuel pressure, your oil temp. You got Waldo taking off over there in the steerman, giving a ride, trying to get rid of some mosquitoes. Uh, we got a suction gauge right there for our. DG instruments, uh, the fuel gauge. This is the water rudder, and it once the uh, when I get in the water, it's disconnected at this point. But down uh, where the tailwheel is, there's two little uh, rudders that wrap around the tailwheel. This is the back of the airplane, and what happens is, is when I engage this, I pull this out, I wiggle the rudders, and now when I actually move that, you see how that handle turns? Uh, one rudder will come out and turn the airplane to the left. This one comes out, the airplane's going this way. This will turn it to the right. So uh, once after I'm in the water, I'll engage that. And then before I take off, I'll make sure it's disengaged because I don't need that when I'm flying. Uh, this is the landing gear selector. This is very similar to the Wildcat. Uh, I click the little switch over here to raise, and it takes me about 42 cranks to get the landing gear up and it takes 42 cranks to get it down and uh, then here's your indicators here for down that's up obviously we want the landing gear down when we land on the land and we want the landing gear up when we land on the water 
that's a good thing. Uh, electrical panel over here is basically all I worry about is the battery, the generator, fuel pump, the radio's master switch, so which I'm not going to need today. I'm not going to talk to anybody. And that's a bolt meter there. So, okay. So let me go ahead and get my helmet on. This is uh, a very, very loud airplane. And believe it or not, it's actually louder than an AT6 on takeoff. It is by far the loudest warbird ever made. 